Hey, so it's day four post-op. It's actually almost day five because it's almost midnight. Um, let me say the first few days sucked. <laughs> they were bad. Some of it was, um, me. I'm really stingy with pain medication. Um, I don't like feeling lightheaded, so I want to take as little as I can to possibly function. Uh, unfortunately, immediately after surgery, I needed more than I was taking. So when I broke down and took it on a scheduled basis, it made the next day a whole lot easier. Um, <clears throat> and now between that and uh, getting further up from surgery, I'm able to back down on pain medication. I am still sore. I'm very sore when I'm trying to get up and down from a chair or into a horizontal position in bed. Um, but at rest, uh, it's pretty tolerable. I would say at rest, it's about me, eh, maybe a two to three. That's pretty manageable on that old one to 10 scale laying down ooh, shoots up <laughs> those position changes that use my core. Um, so at this point, what I did yesterday and today was I only took half of a Norco and I took it at 12 hour intervals and that more than did it. So most likely tomorrow I will just transition on to just plain old liquid children's Tylenol. Um, did the math to figure out what my dosage might be because they don't make adult liquid Tylenol. Um, still avoiding any NSAIDs or anything. A, they're going to irritate my tiny new tummy and B, um, there's the risk of bleeding. I'm still too close to surgery. I don't want to take any chances with any NSAIDs or aspirin or anything along those lines. So, uh, how has progress been? Well, let's see. My incisions are itchy. So good news. That means they're healing. Um, <clears throat> I've been continuing to use my incentive spirometer. Uh, my oxygen sats have been much sturdier. Uh, they would occasionally desat down. We usually position based, uh, and when I use my incentive spirometer, it opens things up and I do a whole lot better. Uh, I have been up and walking. Um, today was the first day I didn't feel like I was completely exhausted after each little thing. Uh, prior to day, take a walk, take a nap. Uh, take a shower, take a nap, whatever it was, I needed a rest afterwards. And so today I actually did not take a nap at all. Um, I did do my two walks that I scheduled for myself and I actually extended both of them a little bit. So I'm going to start increasing my distance, listening to my body and seeing how long it will let me go distance wise. Um, realizing that whatever I go, I got to make the trip back. So you know, don't go too hog wild yet, but it's getting there. Um, <clears throat> diet wise, I am still having stomach cramping. Uh, it's not with every single sip like it was. I'm having one right now. Um, and I didn't drink anything, so I don't know what's causing that one, but I do still get the stomach cramps. They don't feel good. Um, but they're not quite as severe as they were immediately post-op and I'm not getting them at every single um, <clears throat> every single time I take a sip of anything. Today my diet advanced from strict clear liquids to what they call full liquids. So that means that I can have any liquid you can't see through. So um, I had some kefir. Kefir sat just fine. Did really well. Um, I can have soups as long as there is absolutely no solid. So if there's solid in the soup, I need to strain it out. Um, but the, the cream broths are fine. Um, I actually made myself some pumpkin soup. It's a savory pumpkin soup. Um, and <clears throat> I had pumpkin on hand and just made sure that I literally just had a smooth soup, no chunks whatsoever in it. Um, that soup I had four ounces of it. It took me over an hour to finish the four ounces. I do use a little tiny baby spoon. The baby spoon makes it a lot easier to control the little tiny bites. So that way, if you start to feel a little full, you can stop and back off. Uh, Cause one spoonful can definitely be too much. I do not want to have any issues with leakage um, because at the moment my stomach is strictly held together by the line of staples running down the edge of the new stomach. 
Um, <clears throat> so, um, that actually sat kind of like a brick. Um, <laughs> I got it down. Uh, but you know, so I'm going to take it easy on that. I had the one serving that was plenty. Uh, what I did since the recipe made, I made like a small pot, but it's still an awful lot for my new capacity. And so what I did was I took a bunch of it and I put it in ice cube trays and froze it and pretty much like one to two ice cubes worth is a serving. Um, so I'm going to put those in a Ziploc bag and then continue to freeze the rest of it so that I only have a little bit left out to eat. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to do a pumpkin soup, um, was not Thanksgiving related, uh, because, but what it was is my bowel function has returned. So, you know, day two, we started to have, um, some flatus gas passing and we were like yay we actually rejoiced we were all excited my husband giggled about it because of course farts are always funny um but it was also a welcome thing because it meant that I had bowel function returning um it definitely insulted my whole GI tract and so it kind of was like backing off and doing some, some of what it needed to do but uh passing gas was not one of those so that was day two day three three, I actually had my first, uh, stool and it was formed. And that was awesome because the, the liquid diet before surgery gave me absolute pure liquid diarrhea for two days. Um, wasn't looking forward to the return of that. <clears throat> so yay, rejoiced. It was normal. Well, today <laughs> diarrhea came back. So, um, pumpkin does tend to help it's gentle, but it does tend to help firm things up. So I'm hoping that pumpkin soup will actually address that little issue. So yeah, yeah, you become somewhat obsessed with it when you've had GI based surgery. Uh, you want to know that everything's working correctly and there's no complications. Um, let's see. Uh, the rest of my elimination system is going great guns. I was not able to get in my full 64 ounces of fluid today because the full liquids literally kept me so full that I had to wait uh, probably 45 minutes or so for them to work their way through before I could continue on liquids. So I didn't get in my full dose of liquids, but I did make it up to 50 ounces. So yay me. What am I drinking? I have my clear liquids. So I had chicken broth. I had some diet pomegranate blueberry juice. That was a treat. I haven't had juice literally in years. Um, <clears throat> for my full liquids, of course, I mentioned the kefir. I mentioned the pumpkin soup. Oh, sorry, it's kind of late here. Um, <clears throat> and those actually sat better. The clears sat easier than the um, fulls. I did get in uh, a protein shake. So it was the super low carb uh, muscle milk. I like vanilla because you can flavor it however you want to flavor it. Not as much of a fan of chocolate, but some people prefer that. Um, it's an 11 ounce shake with 25 grams of protein. It took me I think almost three hours to get that 11 ounces down uh, but it went down that actually sat pretty well um, and wasn't quite as heavy as the pumpkin soup the pumpkin soup is not really that thick uh, in terms of volume I made it runny on purpose but it was still pretty heavy for my sensitive new tummy so I think I will go a little easy on that uh, maybe have uh, one ounce of it tomorrow uh, at most two but just a little bit of it to kind of help get things sorted out. Uh, energy wise, again, like I said, this is the first day I haven't been entirely wiped out, but yeah, I'm still tired. Um, clothing wise. Yep. I am in one of my shifts. This is one that I made. I have yet since surgery to get dressed in proper clothes. Um, the shifts that I made, I have this one, I have a linen one, I have some others. 
um, they literally fall from the neckline. And so there is zero pressure on my abdomen. It is still tender and I really don't want anything rubbing on it. Um, one of my incisions is right up where the bra line would be. Um, and I don't want to wear a bra cause I really don't want a bra rubbing on that at this point. Um, it's very tender. There's stereo strips on it. I just don't want to take any chances on disturbing it. So I guess I get to go on natural under whatever I am wearing, um, <clears throat> at least for a little bit longer, but it's been chilly and I've been wearing sweatshirts. So if I'm outside, uh, doesn't matter. Nobody can see anything anyhow. So it's all good. And when I'm at home, I can wear whatever is comfortable. Uh, I have been freezing cold since surgery. Um, being in the midst of menopause, normally I am roasting and dripping in sweat, but since surgery, I have been absolutely freezing cold. I have the fireplace going. Uh, I have been up to my neck with blankets. I have my chair has a heater built into it. I've had that going on. My husband is roasting and I'm absolutely freezing to death. So I guess we've returned back to the pre-menopause in terms of that. Hopefully that resolves sometime soon because being cold all the time is not any more fun than being hot all the time. Uh, homeostasis would be a beautiful thing. Ah, um, so in terms of what else? I got my follow-up appointment for the surgeon. I see him in one week. I am actually at this point down six pounds from starting uh, my pre-op diet, um, which was that liquid diet. Um, you know, not a huge amount, but I will take it. It's definitely a step in the right direction. Nutritionally, I am still focusing a lot on hydration. I don't want to get dehydrated. And calorically, I was getting maybe three, 350 for calories. Um, in a day, the full liquids are slightly more calorie rich. And so today I ended up with like 580 for calories. I'm not hungry. I have absolutely zero appetite. Now the surgeon warned me that would happen. So it's just, it's like a job. I got to schedule it. You have to eat at certain intervals. You have to keep working to get those liquids in. Um, <clears throat> and I'm okay with that. It will, from what I am told, get a little bit easier as I get further out and the swelling goes down and my stomach will actually hold a little bit more. Eventually it will hold about four ounces, which is a half a cup. So whatever meal I have will not be able to exceed half a cup. Um, I don't want to actually go larger than a half a cup because if I can get in enough calories to sustain me and keep me healthy, keep my protein intake up, um, that's awesome. I do not want to stretch out this pouch. This new tiny tummy of mine is an awesome and very powerful tool, but it is definitely possible to stretch it out. If you stretch it out at this point early on, you're liable to get leaks and that's going to require emergency surgery. Oh my God, I don't want to go through that surgery again. Um, <clears throat> the spasming and everything is starting to improve. I have no desire to backtrack. Uh, and then in the longer term, I don't want to stretch it because then you end up being able to eat more, you're hungry more, and you end up actually regaining the weight. And so that is not the reason I went through this drastic procedure. Uh, emotionally, no buyer's remorse. Uh, I'm doing okay there. There is some frustration in that I want to, of course, heal faster than my body does. But realistically, given that I'm only four days out from surgery, I'm doing pretty well, I think. Um, I walked yeah, three quarters of a mile today. That's pretty good for being so fresh from surgery. It wasn't a fast walk. Um, I did not break land speed records, but I got out there and I did it. The fresh air was nice. Ah, so the plans for tomorrow, <clears throat> continue to walk, continue to get in a minimum of 75 grams of protein. 
uh, as I get a little further out, I'm looking to advance that to, you know, 80 to 90 grams of protein. Um, I started uh, biotin gummies uh, because, as you can see, I have hair. Typically, people do have a fair amount of hair fall just from the shock of surgery and the sudden change in nutritional intake. So I want to do whatever I can to support my hair. I have uh, chewable bariatric multivitamins. They are four times a day. I think the next time I reorder, I'm going to get something that's three times a day. Four is not so convenient to get worked in, at least when I return to work. Um, the plan is I return to work in about a month. Um, so I've got my multivitamins and I got some other ones, um, probiotics and those, they're all basically chewables. I went through my regular supplements that I normally take and I picked out all the ones that were either small or were ones that were cap, well, not capsules, they were tablets that I could cut into small enough pieces. Um, so I basically set out my supplements for a week. There are some that I cannot take yet because the capsules are just normal sized capsules, but they're too big for my stomach right now. And I don't want an obstruction because that sounds incredibly painful. Um, friends are super supportive. Oh my God. I love you guys. You, you must be sick of hearing me at this point, uh, but that's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. You haven't complained about it, at least not to my face. Um, but you guys are all truly awesome. And uh, that support is super, super helpful, especially if a day is like extra sucky. Um, again, things are starting to get a little bit better. My mobility is improving a little more. Um, and uh, I certainly don't have any problem sleeping because I am exhausted by the end of the day. So onward to tomorrow. Tomorrow will be day five. Again, working on getting the protein intake, working on a little more liquids. Uh, I am still too full to even consider a liquid anything right now. And it has been at least an hour since I drank anything. So my little tummy is telling me it doesn't want more abuse tonight. Um, continue to work on the exercises. Uh, of course I do weigh myself in the morning cause for me, I like plotting that data and seeing where it is on a graph. And right now my graph looks, whoop, looks like that. So, uh, because it's been a pretty short period of time in which I lost that six pounds and I'm looking forward to more of, more of a dip, uh, you know, Eventually, the weight loss does slow down, evens out, uh, and we'll see what the future's going to hold. But I think at this point, this has been a really good move uh, and definitely worth the initial absolute suckitude because um, that's temporary. And if you look at the whole grand scheme of my life, that's nothing, really. I know I did have someone ask me today. Does it bother me when uh, people are eating around me? Does the smell of food bother me? No, it doesn't. I, the other people that are around, they need to eat. And uh, currently my diet is super, super restricted. But I don't have an appetite, so that's not a problem. Uh, and honestly, eventually I will be able to eat some of these things. I will be able to go to Mossman's and have their amazing uh, fish. Uh, you know, I don't have the chips portion of it anyhow. I would always go and I would have fish and I would have salad. Well, I can still have, eventually, fish and salad, only instead of eating the, you know, six pieces of fish they give you and the salad and maybe a few bites of roll, um, I will be able to eat maybe one piece of fish, possibly a couple bites of salad. That's about it. Uh, nice thing about Mossman's is they have awesome iced tea. I will not be able to eat 
well, I will not be able to drink any liquids either a half an hour before or half an hour after I eat. Uh, however, Mossman's is nice and they will pack it to go so that I can continue to sip my beloved iced tea. That's my big vice. I'll be able to sip that um, afterwards throughout the rest of the day. Anyhow, it is late. I am going to bed. Um, it's definitely a whole lot better than those first few days. And uh, I hope this is helpful for someone. So if anybody has any questions, please ask. I, you know, would like to think that maybe if somebody's considering this or has questions that if my experience helps them, you know, that I've been useful. So take care. Bye-bye.